welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman. We're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And of course, in doing so, we're going to have to, like it was put to me in when I was in Bible school, we need to study the whole counsel of God, the Old and the New Testament. Of course, we live in the New. But there's lots of things under the Old that we don't understand it. It's not, uh, we won't understand some of the things in the New and vice versa. <laughs> we need the whole Bible. And so we have, through the past year or so, covered a lot of subjects. Now what we're going to do, we're going to be talking about how to be led by the Spirit. Now, I've taught on that before, and I've written a book and called it Spiritology. Uh, but what we're going to do it a little bit, uh, what is going to be different is that I've decided that I've had a lot of victories in my life, being uh, since I was taught how to walk by faith and all of that and graduated from Bible school in 1975. So we've had a lot of victories since 1975, but then we've had a lot of challenges. We've had a lot of failures, let's put it that way. <laughs> and so I decided that even in the book that I wrote on spiritology, I used some illustrations of, of, of different things of how to be led by the Spirit. But there's just a long list of things experiences that we've had in my life, my wife and I, Kathleen, that, uh, you know, are not in the book. And so the emphasis in this next few sessions that we go through is to hopefully that you can learn from my mistakes <laughs> so that you don't have to make the same mistakes as you walk with the Lord. And so that's going to be kind of the focus. But for the first few sessions, Obviously, we're going to have to do a little bit of a review and lay a foundation so that we're all on the same page spiritually. Otherwise, uh, you'll have a little difficulty understanding what I'm talking about with uh, these different experiences that we've had. All right, so then, uh, it goes back for me. Um, of course, I did not become a Christian until I was 29 years old. Uh, in that Bible study, which most of you've heard a testimony, but we'll get to that later. And so for the first 29 years of my life, I was controlled by my flesh, which I didn't understand then. I didn't know any, I didn't know the difference between the human spirit and the physical body. You know, when I look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and make your whole spirit, soul, and body blameless. So you and I are really a three-part being. I am a spirit. What you see and what I see when I look at you, I see your physical body, but that's not you. According to the scriptures, I am a human spirit, and I'm just simply clothed with flesh. I come back here to Job chapter 10 and verse 11. And well, I'll do 10, 10 and 11. Did you not pour me out like milk and curdle me like cheese and clothe me with skin and flesh? Clothe me. Me is, I am a human spirit. I live for eternity. But in this physical dimension, I'm temporarily clothed with flesh, skin and flesh. And uh, and so I have to have a physical body in order to live in this physical world. And then also in Romans chapter 8 and in verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. So we need to be sure that we're led by the Holy Spirit if we're sons of God. <laughs> now, I, uh, I've gone ahead and you know, I, I'm not, we're not going to teach, you know, on this book on spiritology. But I do want to just, like here, I thought this is kind of a good way to start, too. Um, spiritology, I, I just made up that, that, uh, that word when I wrote this book, the title. Of it. But it's, it's simply understanding how things work in the spiritual realm. This physical realm is temporary. Everything's temporary in this physical dimension. I don't know how many times, you know, I go back and, of course, repetition, that's just the way it works. We need to hear things over and over again. 
But when I come to 2 Corinthians in chapter 4 and verse 18, it reads this way. While we do not look at the things which are seen, that's all these things in this physical dimension, but at the things which are not seen, the things in the spiritual realm, you know. 99% uh, of us never see God. By that I mean as Jesus doesn't appear to us in a vision or anything. Uh, I've never had uh, God appear to me. And it's, it's, it's Hebrews eleven six for me. It says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. But you must believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Well, I believe he is. <laughs> uh, many times when I'm praying, I go back to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. And I say, Lord, I, I, I love the one whom I've not seen. I love you. I've not seen you. And, of course, even in John chapter 20, verse 29, the Apostle John said, uh, Blessed are those who have not seen, yet believe. I've not seen God, but I believe. And 1 John 4, 4, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So we, do, we look at the things which are not seen. The things which are not seen, it says, for the things which are seen, it goes on to say in verse 18, are temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So reality is the things of the Spirit. It, God's Spirit, John 4, 24, God is Spirit. And he created everything that exists. Now in this verse 18 of 2 Corinthians 4, it tells us the things of the physical dimension are temporary. Well, we all know, I think by now, if you've been around for any time at all, we've got friends or relatives that have died. Their bodies have stopped breathing and if you've ever touched a dead body it's just stiff and cold and uh, I've done that <laughs> and uh, it, whoever whoever whatever my dad or mom they're gone they're not in that body anymore they're gone and so we have to uh, and even this physical dimension according to the scriptures in about another thousand years this at the end of the millennial reign this whole physical earth and the physical universe is going to be consumed in fire. It'll no longer exist. And you can find that in uh, oh, 2 Peter in chapter 3, beginning of verse 10, especially in the Amplified Bible, but any translation. And you'll see that it gets consumed in fire. And then there's a new earth and a new heaven. And so the things of the spirit never cease to exist. Even as human spirits, we never cease to exist. You and I will never cease to exist. Our bodies will die, our physical bodies, but we will live for eternity, either in hell or in heaven. And even demons, see, that one-third of the angels fell or rebelled against God. But even they, <laughs> and uh, they will never cease to exist. So hell was created originally for them and because uh, they were spiritual criminals, and hell is a prison. But later on, unfortunately, human spirits have rebelled and, and, and will spend eternity in hell with these angels. You know, I often go back here, you know, there's some verses that just make an impact on you and, and you, just, uh, you just never forget them. <laughs> I come back here and to Matthew chapter 7 and I look at verse 13 and Jesus is speaking. And, I'm, and he said it, I didn't. He said, enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. That's hell. And there are many, many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life or heaven. And there are few who find it. Now that's the tragedy. The majority of the human race is not going to make it to heaven according to to Jesus. And so it's so important that we understand spiritual things so that we don't miss heaven. And uh, so I started to say that I think what, what I would like to close, well, we'll it's, in, it's incredible how fast these 10 minutes go. Well, <laughs> God bless you. We'll look forward to seeing you in the next session. Amen. <laughs>